Rabbi Stephen Franklin to give the opening prayer for us tonight. I would ask, as is traditional, everyone to rise. Rahamana, merciful one, source of all wisdom, our help in ages past, our help in the present, please, Eternal One, be with us in the future. As we study the history of terror, and we find ourselves confronting it even today, help us to use reason and learning as part of our response. Help us to learn from tonight's lecture on that very subject. May it be thy will, O God, and let us say together, Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. Welcome to the seventh annual Frederick Schweitzer Lecture at Manhattan College. I am the director of the Holocaust, Genocide, Interfaith Education Center and assistant professor of religious studies. This is the fourth year that I have the honor of presenting the Schweitzer Lecture and commemorate Kristallnacht with the Manhattan College community. Recently, Frederick Schweitzer lost his lovely wife, Jacqueline, and I would like to acknowledge her in memory and thank her for her support for the center and the lectures that were held at the center in the past and today. Fred Schweitzer is a man who is kind, gentle, and soft-spoken, but his intellect and pursuit of scholarship is as fierce as it was 30 years ago. How do I know this? I know this only by reading his past scholarship and his present work on anti-Semitism and Judaism. His dedication and unique focus on anti-Semitism is why we are here today comm commemorating Kristallnacht at a Catholic college. And as history tells us, in the 1960s, after the Vatican II document, Nostra Aetate, the New York Diocese and Anti-Defamation League plan to work together to improve Catholic-Jewish relations and later Catholic-Muslim relations. The Archbishop requested that Manhattan College prepare for him a 60-page summary about Judaism. A young, hot history professor, Frederick M. Schweitzer, was assigned the task. The 60 pages became a 300-page book and he found his life's work. Dr. Schweitzer's study of Judaism, anti-Semitism, and the Holocaust led to four books, numerous articles, and lectures. And in 1996, the founding of the Manhattan College Holocaust Resource Center, the Manhattan College Holocaust Resource Center at that time grew out of discussions <clears throat> between concerned faculty, administrators, at the college led by Rose Santos Cunningham, Brother Peter Drake, and Frederick Schweitzer, and members of the Riverdale community, most notably Martin Spett, who regrets not being here today. Dr. Schweitzer, the first director of the Holocaust Resource Center, engaged in outreach to the Jewish community, scheduled lectures by Holocaust scholars, and conducted workshops for area teachers. He was later assisted by Dr. Jeff Horn, who is here as well, a history professor, who became director in 2007, after Dr. Schweitzer retired and became director emeritus. Dr. Schweitzer's book on anti-Semitic myths, a historical and contemporary anthology, discusses the current revival of anti-Semitism in Europe and the demonization of Jews in the parts of the Muslim world, gives special importance 
to the exposure of the myths and lies that for centuries led people to regard Jews as a dangerous other and that led to violence and persecution. Schweitzer presents 90 documents that focus on the nature and evolution and the deep meaning of the principal myths that have made anti-Semitism such a lethal force in history. Jews as deicides, ritual murderers, agents of Satan, international conspirators, and conniving and scrupulous Shylocks. Also included are documents illustrating the recent revival of classical myths about Jews among black nationalists, Holocaust deniers, and Islamic fundamentalists. The revival of anti-Semitism is popular in Muslim communities, but we should not forget that it is still alive in European communities. The image of Jews as victims has now transformed to the oppressors vis-a-vis -vis the war between Israel and Gaza. These images create rifts and allow violence to continue between communities that are under the myths of anti-Semitism that Schweitzer discusses in his anthology. However, we should never forget the motivation and inspiration that Dr. Schweitzer provided to the college and community. We are here today to remember Kristallnacht, the beginnings of the, one of the worst crimes against humanity, and we are witnessing similar crimes in many parts of the world. Today we may not talk about race domination, but it is a battle of ideologies, methodologies, and beliefs. The 21st century is witnessing the worst type of crimes in Muslim-majority countries where Muslims are killing Muslims. And the message of hate, fear, and religion are being echoed from ideological religious leaders. This time is of utmost importance. We must stand together, bearing our differences in creating vigilant and strong front against hate speech, beheadings in the name of Islam, and oppression. The night of crystal, or the night of broken glass, or Kristallnacht, will always remind us of how murdering a race of people, the Jews, can lead to a lifelong catastrophe, even today, anti-Semitism. I am, as most of you know, a Muslim, and I teach Islam in this dismal time for Muslims, but I also teach religion and the Holocaust. In my own research, anti-Semitism is still more prevalent than Islamophobia. A shocking fact, but true. So tonight, I'd like us to pray for the millions of victims during the Shoah, but tonight we are also honored to have amongst us Mrs. Coleman and Mr. Seidel, who are survivors and who are going to come with three of our students from Manhattan College to light candles in memory of the victims of the Shoah. I'd like to mention the three students that are coming up with our survivors, and um, amongst us we have our yeshiva students, are part of the fellowship that the center has created with the yeshiva, with self-help in Manhattan College. I'm very proud to say that this is the first fellowship that is bridging faiths through the Holocaust. So please, I welcome you to come up. Let us take a moment and reflect. Thank you.
I would now like to introduce our, our honored speaker, Dr. Murray Baumgarten, <clears throat> who is here all the way from UC Santa Cruz with his wife, Sheila. Where are you, Sheila? I don't see you. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> She's right here. And um, some of his relatives are here, which is wonderful. And we're honored to have you here at Manhattan College. Now you know we exist. And you know we do wonderful things. So I welcome you anytime. And I hope you've put your email list in front so we can have you here over and over again. So welcome. Dr. Murray Baumgarten is a friend, scholar, and a member of what I call my Venetian Jewish family. I met Murray in 2006 at the National Endowment of Humanities Seminar in Venice, Italy. This seminar, which was entitled Venice, the Jews, and Italian Culture, Historical Eros and Cultural Representations, was an intensive five-week study in the oldest ghetto in the world, Venice, Italy, which will commemorate its 500-year anniversary in 2016. Murray led the seminar with our mutual colleague and friend, Dr. Shaul Bassi, who spoke here last year for the sixth annual Schweitzer Lecture. So hence, you know, my families just keep coming here. Murray describes himself as a Jewish salesman with two suitcases, but I think he has multiple suitcases in which treasures of his knowledge and syncretic intellect glow. He is a scholar of Jewish literature, history, religion, and memoir. 